All right, welcome back. This is another video on Waveform featuring Waveform 11. And I have been learning a feature which is a MIDI effect similar to the arpeggiator, but this is for generating chords called the Chord Companion. So I'm going to show you the setup and then I'll walk through the user interface. The first thing we want to do is add it. You need to add it ahead of a virtual instrument so you have some sound. It doesn't actually create any sound on its own. So I right click on the plugin object and I will type in chord for chord companion and then we'll drag this in to the project. I'm putting it on the first channel and as you see here the routing as it goes from here. Now on this track you'll also need a MIDI controller though you could play this thing with your mouse, but it's probably better if you have a MIDI controller, either in a keyboard format. In this case, I'm using a 16-pad drum pad setup, which is the uh, Personas Atom. The idea of this is that it holds all the harmonization for chords in all the keys and all of the scales so that you can play them from a single note. And you can kind of set this up flexibly so you can make a kind of a pad layout of chords that you can play. Now when you click on any of these dots, which represents all the possible chords that it can do, then you hear the chord. You hear the chord assuming you have an instrument set up. I have the RetroMod set up, and our sound is this one here. So this is a C chord, C sharp, D. The ones that are lit up are the ones that are in the scale. And you set the scale using these series of buttons over here on the right. So if I wanted a D scale, when I click that, you'll see all of the lighted dots are the ones that work in the key of D. The root being here, and then you've got your, your other major chords here, which would be your four and five, and then the minor chords. So these would be all of the chords you'd use in a normal song. So what we do is we take these and then drag them to the pads so that we can play them. Before that will work though, I will need to make sure that the mapping for the pads is right. And you do that with this button down here. You can see we've got on the bottom of the screen here up to four pages of these A through D. And this essentially enters the MIDI learn mode. So we're going to start at the top pad here. And in MIDI learn mode, I'm going to press the first button on the controller, which assigns it. And then you can see that the highlight moves to the second button. Now, I would label these buttons as they're on the pad from the lower left corner going up. But the way this assignment works is it goes top down and left to right. So I just press each one in order. Now I'm finished with the MIDI assignment, so I click this again to exit the MIDI assignment mode. Now you'll notice, for some reason, whenever you finish that, it flips to page B. So flip back to page A, which is where we started. Now we can test the MIDI mapping, and you can see that all of my pads now, when I press them, they light up correctly. Now I'm going to show you pulling in one of these chords. So I'll take this C chord and drop it on this pad here. So now when I play this, I get that chord. In addition, within the chord, it's in the root version of it where the root note is at the lowest. You can also do the three different inversions of this triad. So if I click here, I get the various inversions. Same notes, but the notes are in a different order. I'll leave it at that for now. You can also go down different registers. So if I do minus, it goes down an octave or two octaves. So that's our root note. So if we then grab F and the G, and we're putting these on different notes, then we'll grab the A minor, and that creates the whole 
set you'd need for a common chord progression for many, many pop songs. Now one trick with this, because it tends to play out at the same register, is if your patch that you're playing into is sounds too high, you can pull in the pitch shifter ahead of it. So again, I'll right click on the plugin object, type in pitch. When I start to drag, then I can drag the pitch shifter ahead or between these two things. Now this pitch shifter will affect the MIDI data if you put it in this position, but it would be an audio pitch shifter if you put it after, so it's kind of cool that way. But I'm going to right click and then just put this the whole output of this down. Let's try two octaves. All right, so let's play these. So there are our chords. We could also shift keys quite easily. So if we want to go from C to say E. Very easy to do. Back on C, if we want to have some more flavorful chords to use as an alternatives, in my C position to the next pad up, I'm going to drag in this major six chord. For the F, let's try a major seven. And for the D, so you, as you go up, you'll get more notes. Like if we put in a minor dominant ninth, we get a lot more notes. So you'll see that's a five note chord. Harmonizing right across by skipping every other note on the major scale, which is how harmony works. And if you watch the piano keyboard here, and I change this inversion to one, now the other thing about the key is that you can, if you have this engaged here, it will follow the key of the song. So that is set in the tempo track and you can shift that key as the song progresses. But for right now, I've got the song key set in C. And so once you start playback, once the cursor passes the beginning of the song, it will shift the key. So I'm gonna switch this to E flat and then rewind the song we hit follow host key, you'll see that now my whole thing is shifted to E flat. Now this is one of the things about Chord Companion is it doesn't show anything as flat. It's shown as D sharp. So I'll change this back to C for right now. And the next thing to take a look at is the section over here that allows you some additional creative control over those chords. And this is where this plugin actually gets a lot more fun. So we've got the arpeggiator. Now a few videos ago, I showed the arpeggiator plugin as well for Waveform 11. And this is similar. It doesn't have quite as many options to it, but it's very, very similar in the way that it works. So with the arpeggiator engaged, we can choose the number of octaves to arpeggiate. We can choose if it's going up, down, or cascade. So we'll do up and down, and let's go a little bit faster. We'll do eighth triplets here. How about all up? Or we could go quite a bit faster on 16th notes. 
And let's go up and down. Another thing I wanted to point out is in the chord options, instead of having only the strict harmonization of all the chords, you also have the option to pull in these suspensions as, as well as power chords, power chords being two note chords with just the root and the fifth. The suspensions have a unique musical function. They sound like this is a fourth. Let's do it without the arpeggio. Now we also have a repeat section. We can choose different repeat patterns. So I'll go and choose on beat. So it allows you to create these kind of repeating patterns. You can also do some common chord patterns. more aggressive and weirder things. So those are all kind of fun. I'm gonna turn that off and turn the arpeggiator back on. And then I'm gonna to switch to a piano sound. For this, I'll just load up, I think I'll load up Easy Keys. it tends to sound a little bit mechanical. So this random section allows us to randomize the links, add a little swing, random positions, and randomize the velocity. All of these things were the same things we had in the arpeggiator, so I'm not gonna go over all of them. The important thing is that you can choose whether to rand randomize just the arpeggiator, the repeater section, or both. I'm going to leave it on the arpeggiator and the most useful one here I found is to randomize the velocities, especially if you're using a velocity sensitive instrument like piano. Now, compare that to with it off. Let's try a different pattern like Cascade. Pretty cool, here's a chord plus octave. It's really a lot of fun. As you get into it, you wind up getting to where as you work with these values, let's slow it down a little bit, you wind up spending a lot of time and, and hours. Now, of course, at any point, you can hit record and start to capture these things. And you can also save presets with, with it as well. So we could do save as and just say this is our, I'll just call it the basic chords preset next time I need to pull it in. Now I do recommend that you save your preset after you map the controller so you could pull that back in as you get started on new versions of these setups. So that's an introduction to the chord companion. It is a very fun tool to play with to get some creative inspiration. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video very soon.